Next, we're going to hear from Michael Kramer, who's a former member of the Israeli Occupation Forces, 1973 Arab-Israeli War, who became a supporter of Palestinian resistance. President, he's now president of Veterans for Peace, New Jersey Chapter 021. Good afternoon, <clears throat> comrades and friends. Um, as an Israeli soldier, I took part in the occupation, not only of Palestine, but of Syria and Egypt. And I just want to expand a bit today our solidarity with the people of Syria who continue more than 60 years since 1967 um, in the Golan under a brutal occupation, which in many ways mirrors the occupation of Palestine. Land expropriation, administrative detentions, unending imprisonment for decades. So uh, why don't we just give a round of applause to a people who, like the Palestinian people, are the definition of steadfastness, refuse to give up their land in the Golan. Thank you. The last few days, um, if you followed uh, the news from uh, Palestine uh, and Israel, you'll see there have been quite a few demonstrations uh, called by Israelis. And they're called by different organizations. And they have different agendas. Um, some are for the release of civilian detainees. Others are for, let's have elections and get rid of Netanyahu's government and bring in a new government. But yesterday, there was an interesting one. And this took place in Haifa. And there was a demonstration. The maximum allowed by police was 700 people. Uh, I don't know how many more would have gone. But very different from the others, we saw placards raised, stop the genocide, and it was a joint demonstration of Israelis and Palestinians under very, very difficult circumstances, uh, literally a police state with people armed all around them, both civilians and police. So, so we salute them. And we hope that is the beginning of a, of a movement uh, in Israel of uniting with Palestinian people. And it, it, it's in a context now of growing instability. It looks stable right after October 7th. There was unity, but we see uh, Right now, there are fights even within the Israeli cabinet. Ministers walk out yelling at each other. And um, recently, the uh, leadership of the Israeli military uh, came out with a statement indicating that there is no victory over Hamas. And this is not really a battle against Hamas, because Hamas is just one organization. It's a battle against the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, the Democratic Front, and the whole Palestinian people. Uh, the narrative tries to kind of put it in a place. This is a war against Hamas, Hamas, but it's not. It's a, it's a war against the Palestinian people, and it's a war and occupation that have been unending uh, since the beginning of the 20th century. Now, Zionism, uh, and I can speak from experience, uh, particularly for young people, is like a cult. Uh, very hard to break out of a cult. And some people never break out of a cult. And, um, but um, particularly for Israeli youth and, and youth here in the US, particularly Jewish youth here in the US, it is a cult. And it has deep roots in the populations. Um, but we're starting to see that those roots are beginning to rot. 
uh, with all these demonstrations, particularly from uh, Jewish communities. And uh, they're writing with a disease for which there is no anecdote or medicine, and that disease is anti-Zionism. And more and more people are raising anti-Zionism in this struggle, and that is, is a good thing. Now, the struggle uh, against the occupation of Palestine has many fronts. Um, as someone pointed out, there's the economic struggle that's been ongoing, boycott, divestment, sanctions, BDS. Uh, there's the military struggle. And then there's a struggle that uh, we recently got word of a number of Israeli youth have refused conscription. And um, we know of two so far. And I, I can tell you firsthand that these are truly heroic acts. So uh, we recognize Sophia Orr. She's 18 years old and Tal Mitnick. And not only have they, they quietly, um, they didn't just quietly refuse conscription, but they have gone public. And they have gone on the media, uh, French networks, Al Jazeera, Democracy Now! here, and have really made a strong political statements and trying to encourage other youth. So this is something uh, that we should definitely um, follow and monitor and support them because it is another front in the struggle against the occupation of Palestine. And um, lastly, I want to, um, one of our speakers, Larry, quote, uh, talked about Amical Cabral. Uh, the great African patriot who struggled uh, in the Cape Verde Islands and, and Guinea-Bissau. And um, a book written by actually someone who is in our audience, I'll put a plug in, Turn the Guns Around, uh, John Catalanato. Uh, it's a wonderful book for understanding mutinies and soldier revolts, which are not easy things when everybody's got guns loaded all around you. But uh, Amical Cabral on um, January 23rd, 1963, just a few days from short of being 60 years ago, issued this uh, long message to the soldiers, sergeants, and officers of the Portuguese colonial army. It's a very long statement. You can find it in the book, in the appendix. But I just want to read one paragraph. And he's talking to the Portuguese soldiers. Follow the example of your courageous comrades who refused to fight on our land, who revolted against the criminal orders of your leaders, who cooperate with our party or who abandon the colonial army and found in our midst the best reception and fraternal aid. And uh, personally, I want to say that when I was first kind of figuring things out as a recently discharged Israeli soldier and hadn't yet crossed the total line with Palestinian uh, solidarity, I was embraced by the Palestinian community here in New York City. And uh, I'll always remember that. And that we look forward to solidarity between Israeli youth and the Palestinian people to overturn the occupation of Palestine and free Palestine from the river to the sea. Thank you.